Hi gardeners, welcome to autumn. Yes, I know it's a little short of autumn. Today is September the 19th, so we still have a couple more days officially of summer. But in large portions of North America, we've already had frost, and in some places, like right now in uh, Michigan, Wisconsin, they're having killing frost, so they're, their growing season is done. Here in coastal Virginia, we're fortunate that we have a longer growing season. We're gonna take advantage of that by planting our autumn crops. We have many crops that can winter over here in coastal Virginia in spite of light frosts. But we have to get the beds ready because something else is going to grow too, and that's our weeds. I know I always go back to weeds, but as you can see, this bed I'm cleaning up now with my uh, Razorback Professional Turf Edger. It's one of my favorite tools. I have shown it in the past how to work. Literally just push down and it will cut down about four inches that severs a lot of roots that are trying to get in, especially crabgrass, takes them out a reasonable way, forces them to find a new method. Now, I've already done this a little bit, but you can see how it brings this up nicely, and then we can finish the process with a hoe. I used to make the mistake of digging it into it like this, but instead, I like working it along the edge like this, and this will bring the grass up, as you can watch here. It just digs in and pulls up where we've already worked. Leaves a nice straight edge there too. And we can go clean this up, or you can leave this green matter in as a green compost. If you run into clumps like I have over here, that's when you'll do the back motion. And now you can see how this entire clump of weeds has come up in one fell swoop. You can knock some of the dirt off of it and put it back into the garden. Now we'll show you some of the failures that we've had with this bed already, and I'll get the camera here. That is our lone Swiss chard from a late August planting, planted by the seed guide, and that was probably a mistake. We had very hot temperatures in late August and everything we planted here, about seven chard, only one came up. Of the lettuce, nothing, it was just too hot. So, when in doubt, replant. This is why I say seeds are cheap and you really ought to give good consideration to using seeds as the basis of your garden, not sets, because if you make a mistake, it's cheap. Now, from a Tuesday sowing, you can see the little guys coming up here. These are bok choy. I am not particularly fond of bok choy. My best friend upon whose ground we are. There's some more bok choy. Get over here and you can see the two rows that are coming up. He loves bok choy, I don't. What I do love about bok choy though, to be rather uh, harsh, I use bok choy on the outside like this as a sacrifice plant. We have a lot of slugs in this area and the slugs love bok choy. The first two rows here are bok choy. The next two rows that I have planted and they haven't come up yet is more Swiss chard. The Swiss chard to me is more valuable than the bok choy. It will grow better all winter, it'll overwinter, and then burst forth in the spring. You can look at other videos I've had about bok choy, about uh, Swiss chard. And then inside here, I have planted two rows of black seeded Simpson lettuce. Those are the plants I really want to protect because we have two of bok choy two of Swiss chard, two of green lettuce. Today we'll put in red lettuce right here. 
Then in the middle, we will have spinach, and then we'll repeat the process. Red lettuce, green lettuce, and more bok choy here near the footpath. The slugs do like to hang out in this mulch that we've been using to try to kill weeds. So we've started to really define this bed and take it back from the weeds. Less so here, and the reason why is because of the summer squash. I'm sorry, the butternut squash, my mistake. Take a look at what's happening here. They're still trying to make new squash for me. There are 17 squash and we've harvested six already. This is one plant. Some of these are very close to being ready. This one has a nice color to it. We still have a lot of green though right here in the neck. If we do a thumbnail test, will the thumbnail penetrate? No, it made a mark, but it did not penetrate. Here's the mark right here. We'll try another spot. The skin is ready. Here's a couple of places I've tried in weeks past. They heal up very nicely. The skin says this is ready. We have a bit of a green line here, and this is still a little green. I'm going to let this one hold on for a few more days and let it uh, ripen even further on the vine. Just as a check, look at the bottom, and the bottom is nice and healthy. I uh, took a towel and wiped the bottoms dry on most of these a few days ago. Here's another one that's almost ready, but once again, the neck is very green. This just happened overnight. That's 18. I missed it. Some of these are so close to being ready. We're near the base of the original stalk here. And as you can see, there's still marks of green on this one. And it's that when I use my fingernail, my thumbnail against the skin, if it doesn't resist totally, if it, if it gives even a little bit, I don't want it yet. This is our biggest one so far. And as you can see, it's still very green right here. So not time yet. Here's another one that almost passed the thumbnail test. Let's see how close we can get. Right there. It made a little mark this morning. So I'm going to let it go. This is beginning to look nice up here. On the stem, it's beginning to brown. Three or four more days, it'll be ready. These are all in the two and a half to three and a half pound range. And I'm finding that's actually a lot easier to cook with than the mammoth ones. So this year, our weight will be down, but our squash that we can actually use might actually be up. Think about a family of two trying to consume a six pound squash, and we had trouble with that last year. Here we are very near to the original, there it is. That's one plant and that's where it starts. It is spread out in along an entire 20 foot row and it's trying to take over the remains of our tomatoes. And then all the way over here into the next is where the new are coming in. It does make it hard to weed because butternut squash sprawl and we really have a good variety of butternut here for production. We saved this seed. It does not germinate well. We only had one out of eight come in, but oh, the one that has come in. So what's that got to do with this? I am desperately trying to keep this runner from encroaching onto my fall leafy vegetable bed. I will get it from this side and you'll see the problem. Those are actually on the border of the footpath and beginning to encroach on the bed. 
if I move them, I can pull up the tendrils that are anchoring it to the ground, and that's also maybe giving them a little extra moisture and nutrients. You can see it's already spreading out into the yard. We're going to have a lot of work this autumn because of last autumn butternut squash harvest, which was 141 pounds in one bed. And you'll be able to see it right up here. I am trying to avoid the issue with bed two. Now I'm going to go down to the end here and shoot back. Bed two should be lined up with the skeet over here. That is where bed two ought to be. But the squash plant was so big and prolific, it literally pushed the yard back. You can even see a hint right out to here of how far the squash plant came. You can see there's a little depression there. And that's where the yard, yard has grown back. But if you look at the beds farther up, they don't line up. So we didn't, we weren't aware of it. We just didn't look because we didn't have the hoops. We didn't line them up. And we started planting the beans in the location of where the squash plant had pushed the bed from last year. So I'm going to go back today and redefine this bed along where those uh, skeet are. And that will bring bed two back closer, also make this walkway here narrower because we're just wasting ground right now with a very wide walkway. Fortunately, bed two has really had some nice bean production for us. So even out here in what used to be the lawn, you can see very nice jade beans. These are probably the last pickers from this bed. Anything that's developing right now, we're just going to let it flesh out for seed. So, bed two, except for seed for next year, you're done. You can see some very good seed beans growing right here and right here. This is the advantage of using an heirloom seed. It's organic. It's also open pollinated. That means we can save the seed from year to year and they will grow true to type. Here is a butternut that I have harvested today. And we're going to go weigh that. It has a little dirt on it. So we're going to go fire up the scale and we're going to see how much this guy weighs. And then you can pretty much multiply by 17 or 18 and get an idea of what our future harvest is going to be. Here are two that are curing nicely. A smaller one of a bit over two pounds and this larger one a bit over three. We got this scale for about eighteen dollars and it's been well worth the money we spent on it. There it is. Three pounds, 5.4 ounces. That's a good one. I'll take that all day. A bit over three and a quarter pounds. These are the last two of our uh, spaghetti squash. We were having a lot of trouble with the spaghetti squash with uh, the vine borers just really brutalized them so these two small guys I don't know if they will cure properly we will see this is the BT spray that we have been using nature guard caterpillar killer spray with BT that means it's bacterium thuringiensis this is the stuff See if I can get a better shot of it for you. There we are. This is a concentrate, four teaspoons uh, per gallon for shade trees and or ornamentals. We use um, a little bit less for our vegetables, but still a couple of teaspoons. A bit over a teaspoon in this quart, and it produces a lot of uh, protection from cabbage lopers 
the uh, cabbage moth and uh, the vine borers. More fall chores before we plant. We have an absolutely depressing set of starts here. And once again, this was because of the heat. Well, they were indoors. We lost our air conditioning for about two weeks. So this got up into the mid 80s and that took out a lot of the uh, seeds that are meant to grow and to, uh, to germinate in 50s to 60s, maybe 75 max, and we were at 84, 85. Sorry for the camera jiggle. So we've got a few there. We have, all these are brassicas, so there are um, broccoli. This is a red cabbage right here. And this, poor thing, is, was supposed to be a kohlrabi. I'm going to replant, and that's all you can do. And this is why I say use seeds, because the replanting is cheap. Okay? Summer squash is dead, so now we clear this out. And here's another thing I want to point out. This was just a mass of weeds last winter. And we put this plank on it, and as you can see, that area we got rid of almost all the crabgrass. Now this is kind of a clover that is taking over. It's a ground cover and we're not too worried about that. A quick uh, swipe of um, any tool. I'll just use a hoe and this will be uh, just fine. We can uh, just mush that right in with the uh, compost that we'll put on top of that and that's going to be walkway and we're going to extend bed two out another couple of feet for next year and clean that all up once we get it into the right path. Now we're going to take a look at our finishing compost pile. And there is the thermometer and as you can see it is 79 degrees. If I put it elsewhere into the pile it might be a few degrees warmer and that'll be all. See, that's climbing a little bit above 80. So it's really only about 10 degrees above ambient temperature. That means this is just about done. So for the next week or two, we're going to let bugs uh, do their thing. Remember, worm casts and other bug droppings are going to be great fertilizer to add enrichment to this compost. See, that's come up to 82, 83. Slight variation in temperature in different places in the pile. This is our main active pile right now. And as you can see, it has not settled very much. We filled it to the edge here. It's only settled a couple of inches in two weeks. So this is a pretty packed pile. And inside, you're gonna see temperatures well into the active zone. We're hoping that this will stay into the one teens for a while. By the way, when you push, when you put in a uh, compost thermometer, don't press down on the top. All that will do is begin to break the seal underneath here, right there, and then this won't be weather weatherproof anymore. Take it by the handle and try to jam it in like that. If you meet an obstruction, just move off to a new location. There we go. So here you can see the thermometer is going up rather significantly, and it's not all the way in. So with five or six inches above, we're measuring about 14 inches into the pile, close enough to the center. See, now it's about ready to pass 100 degrees from 80 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, it's what we call steady state. This will allow bugs in. And there it goes, above 100. We'll come back to it and get a final reading. I don't think it's going to go too much above that, but now it's into the active zone, and that means the microbial action is providing the heat there. It's a little bit too hot for worms and other things like that, so they will stay toward the edges of the pile as the center is hotter.
and this is the pile we're putting in right now. It measures well over 120 in there, and it's only surrounded on three sides, and it's not even close to being complete, as you can see there. A lot of good work has gone into this. You can see our brown layers, which we're using as newspaper. Newspaper is carbon, and carbon is fuel. We'd love to have a bit more brown, and my first thought was, they've just harvested corn. Why not use corn stalks? The real reason, there's probably a lot of pesticides and other things that we don't want in our compost pile here. If you're going to feed seven and a half billion people in the world, you're going to need industrial agriculture that uses every advantage that it can, and that means pesticides, fertilizers, uh, genetic modification to the seed, and so forth. But if you want to feed a family, a garden like this can be raised organically, and you know what has gone on to your food. You know, I said that the squash plant was dead, and I should have said almost dead. The summer squash is still trying to grow. This is the female flower here. You can see it. More rounded. And there's bugs in there. And here's the second one. We know this one has already been pollinated because the flower is shriveling up. So this plant that I thought was goners from uh, the vine borers Apparently I've kept alive enough so that it might produce another summer squash or two, and that makes me very happy. This one is not looking good at all. And once again, uh, there you can see, this is what happens when a vine borer gets in. Can you see how it split the stalk wide open like this? And that's where it's been chewing. That will go to the burn pile later on. So we'll have, we have a lot of cleanup to do. We really do. The, um, we really mismanaged the tomatoes this year. We got blight and we got hornworms and we didn't catch it early enough. And in the regrowth, you can see it just went mangle because we were working on other things. This is a problem. You start off a garden too big and the next thing you know, you don't have enough time to take care of everything. Everybody goes, oh, look at these nice flowers. They're not, uh, they're not pollinating. A lot of the pollinators are gone. Our attempt at self-pollination here has not worked. We only have one or two little grape tomatoes. There's one. We used to be getting almost a pound a week now we're going, ooh, one more. So we must manage our tomatoes better. Next year, we're going to go to a single and double stem method. We're going to have one main stem, allow it to branch. So we won't have this near the bottom, one, two, three. See here, there's one, two, three, four, five. We really... Um, we really let that go because these were grape tomatoes and we thought that they should just bush out and we were wrong. So learn from our mistakes, please. So we're gonna have one main stalk. It's gonna split into two and then we're gonna allow each of those secondary stalks to split into two more. And that way we will have more of the plant's energy into fruit growth, not into just random green that can turn to blight in our uh, in our very moist environment here. We've also had a lot more rain than we normally have in any one year. So let's go take a look at the beans in bed too. Remember, these are all saved seeds. This is a seed, this is a pod that we're saving. Save the best for next year. This plant's done. Lots of times you can just turn them out like that. See how I twisted and it came right up. But here are the ones that are actually producing. This plant's having a good day today. Look at this. There's a beautiful one. Bring it up and pull up and you don't tear the rest of it. 
is very long, but it hasn't fleshed out yet. We'll leave it. These two are fleshed out. We can take them. And you can see there's more buds there. If they touch the ground in general, I harvest them. That way bugs are not tempted. See how this one is touching the ground right there? So I'll be glad to harvest him. Don't have to wait for him to get any better. Here's another one that's touching the ground. They can hide pretty well on you. Beans oftentimes look like stalks almost as long as my hand. The variety, as you probably know by now, since I tout it all the time, is jade. These two are very long. We're going to let them flesh out a little bit. Jade doesn't have any string on them, so we don't have to worry about them becoming stringy. get these plants from the other side. These are the newest ones. These plants have died. Those were our first plants. These are our second plants that we planted a few weeks later and these we planted a few weeks even later. To show you the act of seed saving, look right here. That is a dried bean and we're going to go open it up and see what the beans look like inside. Here's another. And you go, man, that looks really sad. Well, they're supposed to be dried up. The beans won't save till next year if they're not fully dry. Let's go take a look at these so far. There's another. There's another. As you can see, they can hide. So we will go open these up. The idea of gardening is to make it all year round and in successive years. We're already thinking about next year with these beans. I will try to set this up so you can see what I'm going to be doing here. Now these are beans that we've been letting dry. There we are. For about a month now, these are some of the first that we saved. If they don't look quite dry when they come out of the pod, we just put them on a piece of tissue paper. There it is. How nice is that? So you can see it looks ugly on the outside, but this is a fine bean for saving. It's very large too, compare that with the others. So you can see these right here, and I will just take them out of their dried pods, and we will see how it goes. If we get one or two beans, we get one or two plants, and think about the yield per seed. But one seed we'll get several ounces of beans. Another beauty right there. Really happy with this. I'm glad you're able to see the end product of this seed saving, which we started weeks ago. If you're going to be a, a, a good gardener, you need to think in advance. Another one that's, we've caught them just right here, folks. I've finally done something right. This one's smaller, but will be just fine. A little wrinkled and a little dry. Some of those will still make fine plants. What we will do is we will, we will sow more plants than we think we will need. Those two are magnificent seeds. Rule of thumb when seed saving, save the best, eat the rest.
Okay. Couple more, and then we'll close out this video. So for those of you taking my gardening class, have hope. It's two days until autumn, but there are a lot of crops that will grow all the way through the winter. The most notable one, garlic, and we won't be planting those for almost another month. Garlic must go through the winter. So here you can see our saved beans, and here are our new ones. You know what? That one doesn't look too good. So we will leave these all out on here. They'll dry in the natural airflow here on the porch. And as you can see, we have well over a dozen seeds for our next crop. Not bad, eh? Not bad at all. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So even if only a dozen grow, we have got a, oh, almost a half a bed of bush beans right here. We had a good harvest on our squash there, three pounds, five ounces. And we have a lot of good beans growing out there. We've harvested some good ones today. So all in all, a very happy day. I will leave a link in the uh, descriptions to places where I showed the beginning of seed saving and also for bed prep where I used the uh, edging tool. So let's go get those beans that are over here and we'll weigh them and wash them up. All right, everybody, have a good day. And remember, you can grow your own food.